Oh, busy schedule, busy time. Uh, Ozai in haste, our uh, stewardship effort for this fall is well underway. And today we'd specifically like to ask you to sign up for the Commitment Sunday dinner, which is at Basil's. It's just a walk on a nice day from here. And it's immediately following worship on November the 10th. Big sign up out there. It's on an easel. So uh, we'd like to make sure we have 50 there. And uh, more than that would be all the better. We've got some goals. So 50 people there. uh, 57 commitments, which is 10 new ones. And uh, 245,000 in commitments uh, are the goals of the stewardship campaign. So uh, be thinking about that. Be praying about that. November 10th is Commitment Sunday. Um, they, there is a need for help immediately following the service today, just rearranging tables in the gym. Uh, so if you can stay a few minutes and help with that, that would be appreciated. Sam, would you put your hand in the air there? Uh, Sam Smith in concert next, uh, next Saturday afternoon at 6 o'clock. Uh, so you see the, the details of Evening of Song on the back page of your bulletin. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to that event. Okay. Is that, is that Saturday or Sunday? Is it, I'm sorry, I said Saturday. Sunday. Next Sunday. A week from today on Reformation Sunday. And Reformation Sunday segues very nicely into the Wittenberg door that is over here. I don't think it traveled as far as from Wittenberg, Germany, but uh, that door has a plan for next Sunday. Uh, If you look at the Paul Meyer book of uh, Martin Luther, he's pounding the 95 theses on the door of the Wittenberg church. Well, you'll be invited next Sunday with post-it notes in your bulletin to uh, post sins, post things that you wish to take to Jesus uh, in prayer, completely anonymous. We don't want any names on those. And uh, during the service time, is that the plan, Patty? Next week, we will post those on our own version of the Wittenberg door here. So, there's an oh boy there. Lou, Lou, <laughs> Lou thinks oh boy. <laughs> uh, there is a bottom to that door. <laughs> Uh, Are there other announcements that need to be shared this morning? If not, Bill is at the organ and he's ready to help us prepare for our worship today.
bless you. <laughs> Join with me, please, as we use the service of confession and forgiveness to prepare ourselves to come to our Lord's table of grace today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. You may choose to use the kneelers at this time. Most merciful God, we confess. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Today we're up to three verses of our theme song for the, for the stewardship campaign. So we sing Ozai in haste.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray together today the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all of the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom, and make us desire always to only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And today from the congregation, Vicar Patty, it's our Temple Talk person for Grace Works. Good morning. Just to talk about doors. As you go into the Great Hall, please look at the doors that the children made last night at Oktoberfest, which was absolutely fabulous. And their assignment was to make Luther's door. And it's very interesting, all the different concepts. So they'll only be there this week because then I'm sending them home with the parents. And we did have two children who were not from our church make doors. And they were of different faiths. So that was quite interesting. So check out the doors on your way out. Now, GraceWorks. How many people know of GraceWorks? We have been in mission with GraceWorks for several decades. And Phil Flommer is actually the congregational representative to GraceWorks. And our very own Pastor John Mittemeyer is on the GraceWorks board. So we have a very long-standing relationship with GraceWorks. They're an organization that provides housing of all different kinds. They have a continuum of care for older adults in Bethany Village. They also have a home health care agency that's affiliated with Bethany Village. They have uh, housing for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. There are daycare programs. And what we have been able to do over the last year is we've developed a partnership of working together. We could never figure out what activities could we do together. So the first Wednesday of the month, a bus arrives in our parking lot. And when you see this bus arrive, it is just shaking and moving because these folks are having fun. They get out of the bus with smiles and hellos and still singing the 70s music that they were singing while on the bus. What they then do, many times I have between 10 and 15 guests and we march into the choir room, and then we have a mission activity that they do for us. These people are so happy and uplifting. When we come into the choir room, the first thing we do is we sing, Jesus Loves Me, and we say the Lord's Prayer. And then I tell them what the task is for the day. And it's usually preparing those grocery bags that we have in the pantry boxes, it's preparing those bags to then be distributed at the Friday night meal. And they just so love packing these bags. And you'll hear them talking between each other. No, you only put one of those. You put two of these. And I mean, they really get into this mission. It is wonderful to see. When they are done making the bags, we then have a snack. And what I did in August, I asked them some questions, knowing that I wanted to share with you what GraceWorks does for us. And I said to them, what, what makes you come to Zion? How do you feel? And what they, a couple of comments that they said is, I like helping people. Now these are people who depend upon others for many activities of daily living. And they're coming out because they want to help others. Helping others makes me a better person. It feels good to help people. I don't want anyone to be hungry. Because as they're making the bags, I talk to them about who's going to receive the bags and how they handle the food. And my favorite quote, so many people help us, so we like to help others. Now this person realized how blessed they were with who helped them and wanted to reach out and help others. Then I asked them, when you go back to your sites, what happens? Well, they're so excited about what they did. They tell everybody that didn't go. 
And what I have heard is they have a waiting list and they sometimes have arguments as to who's going to come next. No, it's my turn. You went last time. So this is a vital mission that they love doing. And I love doing it with them. So if you're ever available on the first Wednesday of the month, come down and join us because it's a very active one hour period of time. But when they leave, I'm like, wow, that was great. We just have such a wonderful time. Now, if you cannot come down on the first Wednesday, how you can help us is the cupboards are bare right now. We have cereal. That's all we have. I think I might have a couple of cans of ravioli. So I will put out the list again of what products we would like you to donate. We still have bags in the, um, in the box there. If before you get the items that we need, things, any can good with a pop top, like they love fruit, fruit cocktail, they love SpaghettiOs, Chef Boyardee ravioli, any type of fruit, whatever you can think of, but it has to have a pop top lid. I think one of the favorite items are the macaroni and cheese where you pour in the water and you heat it up. That is one of the easiest things for them and they absolutely love macaroni and cheese. So if you can help by giving some pantry supplies, we do have to fill the larder before the first Wednesday of November so that they can come and do their ministry with us. If you have any questions about Grace Works, please see me after service and thank you so much for your support. Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our de diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that led, is led to slaughter, and like the sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was his will, the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allow him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out on himself of, to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Word of life, word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. We will now read Psalm 1991, which will be read responsibly. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the most high your habitation, no evil will befall you. 
For God will give the angels charge over you. To guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up. Lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will tread down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them. And show them my salvation. The second lesson is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of the flesh, the, Jesus offered up players, excuse me, prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated for the moment. We'll hear from Sam Smith at this time.
Very few of us can sing like Sam, so you know what to expect next Sunday afternoon or at uh, evening time. Invite a friend or friends to dinner and then bring them here afterwards to uh, hear the music. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant. It is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them, And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you, you must be slaves of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. As we sing the doxology, those children who are present this morning can come to the uh, altar steps. and may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Who'd you bring? My brother. Your brother. I'm glad to welcome you this morning. Glad you're here, okay? I know you think I'm pretty old, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you know that my wife's mother still lives? So um, she would be a whole lot older yet. My wife's mother is 95 years old. And my wife goes, yeah, that's, that's worth applauding, right? She's 95 years old. She lives at home by herself yet and uh, gets just a very minimum of care. And we're trying to change that and improve that some. One of the things my wife does for her mother when she goes up there to see her is to get the big pail of water out, fill it with hot water, a bit of a scrub brush and some soap, and she washes her mother's feet. Doesn't sound like a lot of fun, does it? So, somebody, <laughs> what, about, you see it over there? Okay, good, good eyes. She washes her mother's feet. I've seen the pictures of her toes. Not a pretty sight. But my wife is happy to do that. My wife is happy to do that for her. It helps her feel better. It helps her stay at home. Uh, And uh, then she'll make appointments for the podiatrist as one who takes care of feet and uh, and, uh, helps her in that way. Do you know that Jesus did that in the Gospels, as you can tell from the window? Jesus got down on his knees and he he put a towel over his arm and the basin, and he said, I'm going to wash your feet, disciples. And they looked at him like, are you nuts? They looked at him like he was crazy. That's in those days when everybody wore sandals, when everybody wore sandals and you walked everywhere, what happens? Your feet get dirty. 
first they get sweaty and then the dirt attaches to it, right? And the sand, yeah. Jesus did what the lowliest servant was supposed to do. He washed his disciples' feet. And he said, as what I have done for you, you should do for each other. So there's a day during the church year, Maundy Thursday, it's called. Not Monday Thursday, but Maundy Thursday. When, if you watch on television, the Pope in Rome, he gets down on his, his knees and he washes some people's feet. And, uh, and we are encouraged to do the same. But you know what? These people are pretty funny about their feet out here. Most, most of them don't want to take their shoes and socks off at church and have somebody wash their feet. I did it once in Haiti on a, a Holy Week and hundreds of people who probably had never had anyone wash their feet came that day. But why I tell you that story is that Jesus says, I came to serve Not to be served. You know, when you two acolyte, you come up here and you bow before the altar, the altar of our Lord. And we recognize that that risen Christ is holy and special and the sun coming right through perfectly today for us. But he is also the one who said, I came to serve and not to be served. Do you think King Charles fixes his dinners? in England I don't think so that's what royalty does in our world but Jesus did something very different he says I came to serve you complete turnaround yeah to serve and not to be served so that's an encouragement that we have it doesn't necessarily sound like a lot of fun but it's what Jesus did and he says Follow me and do likewise. You want to ask about the door probably. Yeah, Why is there a big giant door here? Yeah, it, it must have come, come down from the attic or something. You know, it r- fell right there in front of the pool. Well, next week we'll talk, a, we'll talk about the door at the Wittenberg Church where I have been. And where Martin Luther made maybe his most famous claims. We'll talk about that next Sunday. So good eyes, and we'll be having post-its for you, and you'll all be able to write something and stick them on that door next Sunday morning, okay? Let's pray. Jesus, it's hard for us to believe, but we simply want to say thank you for serving us, for giving yourself for us, for sharing a life that is different from anything else the world has ever seen. Thank you so much. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. God's children can say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Friends, grace and peace from the God who wonderfully made us and from Jesus the Christ who redeemed us. Amen. Probably all of us could tell stories of times where we bit off more than we could chew or times when we didn't exactly get what we bargained for. When was the last time you went to the car repair place and they said, oh, all you need is the disc brake pads or, uh, or uh, linings? Oh, no. You need rotors and you need calipers. And we would recommend that you have the, uh, the brake lines flushed. Oh, and there's probably other things too, but... And you come out with a lot larger bill than you expected or hoped for. Or what about home remodeling? As soon as you get started on one thing, you realize, gosh, I better go ahead and fix that too while I'm at it. And we have the wall, uh, the wall opened up, so we better, we better fix the leak and the plumbing, and it just grows 
it grows and it grows. And it becomes a much bigger project than you thought. Just seems to happen to us all the time. I will say, however, I I thought it was so significant. I took my lawnmower in a couple of weeks ago to the lawnmower guy that I've usually used whenever I've needed to. The rear axle on my self-propelled mower was broken. And uh, he said, I think I've got a used one. He said, I don't know why they make them so cheap. I said, well, sharpen the blade and, and so on while you've got it. He called me back an hour later and he said, your mower is ready for pickup. One hour. I thought it was going to be a week or ten days in the middle of summer. But it was one hour. Well, I use those stories about not what you bargained for or, or getting something other than that you expected to introduce James and John, the sons of Zebedee, in the gospel reading today. And I think they're describing every one of us to some degree. I think we all wrestle and struggle with the godly life and how we live our daily life. And we kind of put it all into a blender and we see what comes out. And so here Jesus is teaching disciples all along in Mark's gospel. He's teaching them while he's on the road and those disciples seem to have some of the most interesting conversations. And we look at them like they're, like they're really, really poor disciples. But I'm not sure that's true. They are struggling like we are. It wasn't too many weeks ago you heard them, you heard them uh, debating amongst themselves about who's the greatest among us. And here it's, uh, it's James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They could say they were from the inner circle. They're in the, they're in the first four, if you will, that Jesus calls. Peter and Andrew and James and John. And they are usually the group that, like on the Mount of, uh, the Mount of Transfiguration, that Jesus takes with him. And they seem to be the closest to Jesus. And yet here they are in the conversation today, Jesus, we want you to give us whatever we ask. Jesus, when the time comes and you enter into your glory in a way in which they can't begin to imagine and which still strikes us as so strange, in whenever you come into your glory, grant to us to sit at your left hand and at your right hand in glory. And don't worry about the other ten disciples. They can fend for themselves. But grant to us these particular wishes. That story is interesting and it appears in different ways in all four Gospels. In one of the Gospels, mom gets blamed. The mother of James and John is the one that is described as asking that her sons receive these special honors. And then in a couple of the other Gospels, the story doesn't have this, you will be baptized with the baptism with which I have been baptized, and you will drink the cup that I will drink. Bottom line is still there. But it is not mine to grant. It is for those whom the Father has prepared. And that could be any one of us. That could be the lowliest of all considering Jesus' eye on those who serve and Jesus' call to those who serve. You've heard me express my bias that with 168,000 words in Scripture that we shouldn't have to, over a three-year span, repeat uh, lessons. Well, yes, the Christmas story is going to be the same every year and the resurrection story is going to be basically the, the same We've got two different Gospels that particularly tell that. uh, And Mark, which just leaves us kind of puzzled as to what happened to the disciples afterwards. But the rest of the time, do we really need the Reformation text that we'll hear next Sunday on another occasion? Do we need the suffering servant song that we heard in the Old Testament lesson today? That's Holy Week. Jesus, the suffering servant, one of the four servant songs from Isaiah. 
And the second lesson today with good old mysterious Melchizedek uh, leaves us puzzled too. It's possible that Melchizedek was a high priest without even being Jewish. And it's interesting there that uh, he is offering the sacrifice and he is serving God as he serves the people too. So there are explanations for why these two lessons are matched up today. But again, I'm not a fan of repetition of the, of the Holy Week lesson on, uh, on a Sunday in October. So it brings us back to Jesus and that contra message of his all the time. He says to the disciples, you know that the leaders among the Gentiles are those who lord it over you. There are gatherings these days for new bishops in the ELCA in several of our synods. And the church is full of people in white robes and their red stoles, the color of Pentecost. And it looks like quite a show. It doesn't necessarily look like the servant church in that moment and in that picture to me. I think the servant church is best seen on Friday afternoons and early evenings here and on Saturday mornings over at the Methodist church and at the food pantries and at uh, the various places, Grace Works and so on, even if those developmentally challenged adults still uh, have the same mentality, no, it's my turn uh, instead, of, instead of your turn today, um, there's where the servant church is most visible. When we're out there on the streets, and when we're out there in the community, and when we're out here feeding people in the gym and, and serving people, Jesus came, he said, to, Peter, to James and John, not to be served, but to serve. So all three lessons talk about service and sacrifice. That's hard. That's a challenge. The call of Jesus is not an easy one to answer. The call of Jesus is not an easy one to live out. A little bit as a dead, uh, devil's advocate, one of the pastors on our pericope studies on Tuesday said, what's the good news there? And he left a couple of our laypersons who are covering congregations, kind of like, kind of like the uh, synodically authorized ministries where Patty started out with, uh, scratching their heads, Is he, does he really mean that? Uh, of course it's good news, this, they would say. Well, as I said to the kids, washing somebody's feet doesn't necessarily sound like good news to me. Certainly is good news to the person on the other end. The good news of Jesus Christ comes through, comes out, shows, shows brightly in those moments. And I think you've all had the experience, I hope you have, of how good it is at times to be able to help one another, to serve one another, to help somebody in their tough situation, in their cha most challenging moments, in their times of grief, uh, in times when they're just lost and struggling. The good news comes through, and it comes through those who serve. It comes through those who get it when Jesus Christ says, I came not to be served, but to serve. The one whose crown was a crown of thorns. The one whose glory was revealed on a cross of all places. The one who stood briefly in Herod's and Pilate's palace and briefly wore a purple robe. And it wasn't right in any way, shape, or form for him. But the one who came to serve and who gave his life as a ransom for many. There are challenges in that gospel, and two of them are the baptism with which Jesus is baptized that he talks about there, and the second one is giving his life as a ransom. That's where atonement theory comes in, where Jesus pays the price, where Jesus covers for others. 
We don't ever like to hear the word ransom. It seem, it's uh, evidence that somebody's being blackmailed or held captive or whatever and necessarily paying a ransom to free that person. That's a part of atonement theory. And that's a part of how Jesus is pictured and describes himself. These are Jesus' own words. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. We are servants of the Most High God, and we are serving the one who came to serve and who gave his life for us. In Jesus' name, may that service to our world and that service to others be a blessing both to those who are served and to those of and those who share their gifts with others amen and so we sing the hymn you servants of god please stand Let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all.
You may choose to kneel for the prayers of the people. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Holy One, we give thanks for all servant leaders of the church. Bless bishops, pastors, and deacons, especially Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and Bishop Suzanne Darcy Dillahunt, with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creative One, we give thanks for the delicate balance of the natural world. Kindle in us a spirit of caring strength in the preservation of habitats, food availability, and centers of refuge that all wildlife may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. Empowering one, fill the leaders of government with a spirit of service that prioritizes those on the margins due to job loss, underemployment, unsafe working conditions, and immigration status. May economic equity be achieved for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Restoring one, send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with comfort and peace, especially Paula, Frank, Peggy, Sonia, Sarah, Randy, Shirley, Dennis, Jim, Patty, Julia, Heidi, Alice, Paul, Elmer, and Kel, as well as those we hold silently in our hearts, pray for doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who provide their care. God of grace, we also remember the family and friends of Karen Flaumer and Carolyn Supine, who entered the eternal kingdom. Deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. God of grace, Generous God, we give thanks for the First Nations and tribes who inhabited this land, the Miami and Shawnee, among others. We lament the harm done by colonization. Call us to a deeper appreciation and care for the languages, rituals, and history of all indigenous people. God of grace, abiding one, you call pastors to shepherd the congregation toward faithful living as servants and followers of Jesus. Inspire all ordained ministers and seminarians, including Vicar Patty, Pastor Carmen, and Pastor John, to minister the challenges and challenges, engages and comforts and comfort those in their care. God of grace. Saving one. We give thanks for the disciples James and John and all saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in a promised place at the Feast of Victory that we receive by your grace alone. God of grace, hear our prayer. into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Might specifically reach out to uh, Jimmy Sapine. He's getting ready to go back to California later this week, but uh, will return to us at Christmas time.
Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and at all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and all the choirs of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks for it. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, and he said, take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. You may be seated. Down to the bread of life from heaven for you. Sown you the body of Christ, which he gives for you. The blood of Christ was shed for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you.
fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. The closing hymn today was sent to Patty, what's that about, uh, by my brother. He didn't, he didn't send it to me. He wrote it after both of the hurricanes, so he has written it very, very recently. And it's to a very, very familiar tune, Eternal Father Strong to Save. So we'll sing different words today. that song were to produce a response in you, uh, just simply look up Lutheran disaster response. They're on the ground and they're there for the long term. Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Amen.